Shouldn't All right, so oh, you guys got a second mic. Indications for orbit decompression. Used to be my favorite surgery back for thyroid eye disease. And now with the new biologics, we rarely do it. Um, it's really impressive how the biologic has corrected thyroid eye disease. But um, the other potential reason to do it is obviously if uh, you get a retrobulbar hematoma. Um, I did a cantholysis uh, on this side already. Sorry, we're having a little scope issue here. There we go. Um, well, I'm going to just do the decompression here. All right, so my colleagues have done a very nice job um, skeletonizing the sinuses and uh, at least the lamina here. So if I'm going to do an orbit decompression for thyroid eye disease, I'm going to open up all of the sinuses and even the frontal sinus. Reason is, once someone has uh, orbit decompression, I don't ever want to have to go back and do sinus surgery. It's challenging. You know, we talk about if there's a blowout fracture and trying to get around that defect, that's tough. But if the whole thing is decompressed, it becomes very, very hard. So we're going to take the, uh, the, the lamina is coming all the way anterior. And as you remember, anterior to the maxillary os, this is the nasal lacrimal track right underneath this thick bone. So we need to come all the way up to that space, and we're going to take it all the way back to the apex. And on the nav, you can see, if we switch over to the nav, and I like to look at the axial on this one. And you can see that you got to go all the way back to this area um, to get to the apex, which is beyond the very, um, the, where the bone gets quite thick back in this area. And that's going to require a drill. The question is, where do you start entering for orbit decompression? And where's our caudal? Here's a free. Do you see a caudal? Yeah, we'll get there, but I'm not going to drill at the beginning. I'm going to see if. Okay, this will work for a sec. It's interesting. Usually, the only time the lamina is hard and uh, you have to drill to get into it is when you're trying to do a decompression. All the other times, it's super, super thin. So you can see how mobile this is, and palpating the globe is going to. Um, not on a cadaver specimen, but this will uh, decompress. And all you got to do is just find a place to get in. There you go. Let's see if I can get that better focus for you. Now you're just going to peel it. And you're going to peel it off. And this is a fun little thing. You're leaving the periorbit intact. Again, we've gone through the mucosa, we've gone through the bone, and now we have the periorbit. This is the periorbit right underneath the bone. Um, do your best not to penetrate the periorbit until you're done with this bony part of the dissection, once you do, your fat's going to extrude out and it becomes much, much more challenging to decompress. And sometimes it's quite sticky, sometimes it gets nice and flaky like this. The other thing is you want to take it all the way superior. Again, two different reasons. Thyroid eye disease is one disease. If you're dealing with a proptotic globe after sinus surgery, you're going for quickness, right? You want to get this done. Uh, but you may not do a, a beautiful decompression. The other thing is, for thyroid eye disease, you're probably going to do a two-wall, so medial and inferior wall. We're going to skip that today. Uh, this is a surgery that I absolutely want all of you to do on your specimens today because it's such an important thing that can save vision um, if you get into trouble. All right, so we're going to take this down, and now we're going to use the, This is where the bone always becomes firm right here. And you don't have to drill all the way through the bone to get to the periorbit. You can just thin the bone. But let's do a little drilling. Top button is to just get a switch. Nice. Um, when I drill, so this is a Midas drill. And this is what Arif uses. And so he wanted me to use it just, uh, just for fun to throw me off. Problem with this, there's no suction. And the nice thing about, uh, do you want to put that in the right nostril? The nice thing about the high-speed drills that you attach to your micro debrider is that they have suction on it. So now you can see we're going through, we're going through. And that's the, that's the smoke that, you know, is never all that fun. Um, it can be a little time-consuming. We have a nice pneumatized uh, sphenoid right here. And you know, so pituitary, carotid, we're going to come across. Uh, this is what we're aiming for, right? Right here. Optico carotid recess, right? So we have an anode cell. Uh, I don't have the nav on, do I? That's okay. 
All right. Um, and then there we go. I'm in. Lovely. Just wanted to show you what not to do of how to get into the orbit. <laughs> And you know, it's interesting because we always say, oh, we'll use a diamond burr because it's not gonna drill through, or it's not gonna tear through the dura, it's not gonna tear through the periorbit. It does, it does. Um, what I would do if, uh, when you're doing a decompression, you do want to go as posterior as you can towards the apex. Um, the muscles do tend to get a little bit more superficial the further back you go. So just underneath the surface, you can see there's this you can see there's a yellow hue, and one of the most important things of this lab is to recognize this yellow hue. That's nothing else in the head looks like that. It's this glistening orbital fat, and you need to be able to recognize that. Right above it, this little pink strip, that's gonna be our medial rectus. And you can see how superficial it is towards the back as opposed to up here. So, when you're doing your decompression, you want to start in the back and bring that, I'm talking about the incision through the periorbit, and bring it forward. Because if you start your incision up here and take it posteriorly, all the fat is going to extrude into your field of view, and it's going to be really hard getting back in there. There's a lot of different things you can use. Um, sickle knives work great. Uh, there's some really nice uh, ortholock blades that are a hooked blade that you can Put in, but again, you're probably just going to have your standard sinus set, and so it's nice to learn how to use what you have in your set. A sickle knife is, I'm usually going to do just a little slit like that, pretending I didn't already enter it, and then it's just a matter of coming forward. You really got to think about that medial rectus, like it's sitting right there, and so I'm just going to pull it, and I do like, there's this Arthur Lock blade that I love to do this on. See that medial rectus there? And we're just gonna zip it up in the interest of time. So again, once you get through the periorbit, you can actually grab Takahashi and you can strip it down. Now, Eric's gonna palpate it for me. And it is nice, you can give it a little bit of push and that's gonna let you pull on this. Um, it's interesting, even, this is a great example, even though I've opened up the periorbit, uh, don't push quite yet, uh, this is still all intact, like the fat's just not really going anywhere. And, you know, some people would say, well, what's, there are some septations within the fat. And again, for thyroid eye disease, I'm going to do just a little bit of palpation, but it's always going to be anterior to posterior in the direction of that medial rectus, which is sitting right there. Okay. Uh, we have 15 minutes, so I want to, in the interest of time, uh, pass it off to Nathan and App, I believe. And we do have scissors up here. Uh, ben, if we could go to just a quick overhead while Nathan walks up here five feet. Uh, <laughs> so cantholysis, canthotomy, you're going to take a hemostat, and you're going to go right, you're just going to grab this, you're going to take a hemostat and go right over the top, cut straight down. This will never, I mean, you know, I have more wrinkles on my eyes than this will ever show. And then you grab that, this, this is the, obviously the, um, the lower lid, and you just have to reach down. You can actually take your scissors and you can strum. It's extremely hard in a cadaver because the tendon's so weak, but you can strum and you can feel it, and then just go down and cut it. And you just cut right down to the bone. And sometimes if that doesn't release it enough, you even have to do an upper tendon release. So just those are two things to keep in mind. Again, I encourage all of you to have a tono pen available. Um, canthotomy, cantholysis, that's the first step, and then a medial decompression. So ideally, before you p wake the patient up from surgery, if you're slightly concerned, be looking at the eyes, because you want to identify this before they're awake, if you can. All right. Nathan, you're up.